this place. Love, love is in this place. Love is in this place. Love is in this holy place. Love is in this place. Joy. Joy is in this place. Joy is in this place. Joy is in this holy place. Joy is in this place. Joy is in Would you please greet everyone around you with the namaste hands? everyone. Thank you to those of you who are able to join us. We're so grateful to have a sanctuary large enough to be able to accommodate people coming here in this way and still, you know, honoring the social distancing protocols that we've been asked to honor, but to still have the energy of being together. Uh, just wanted to let you know about a few things before we begin the service. Uh, so, during the service, when we normally come and pass the basket around, we won't be passing it from hand to hand. The ushers will just be reaching over and you can drop the, your donation into the basket. Uh, so again, we're honoring this idea of not you know, having a lot of hands touching and transmitting anything. Uh, also, and by the way, welcome to all of you who are here on Zoom and out there in live stream land. It's so exciting to be able to have us all join in this way. Uh, as far as the protocols that we are following, we hope that we will be able to uh, hold the services in the sanctuary again on Sunday. Uh, it's a day-to-day -day thing. I think uh, our board president, Blair, and I should just have walkie-talkies <laughs> because we're constantly checking in and uh, seeing what is the best thing to do as of right now. And so the best thing for you to do, and I'll remind you at the end of service as well, is check our website, www.nhcrs, just think North Hollywood Church of Religious Science, nhcrs.org, and we will try to keep the information posted there. We will also... Um, be having our message when you call into the church. And if you want church hours and directions, we will have information there about whether or not we're holding services. So we're trying to keep you up to date um, in as many ways as we possibly can. Um, I think right now, that's all I need to... Info oh, also, we won't be collecting prayer requests tonight, but I will let you know of ways you can still submit them uh, after the service. With that, I would like to invite Erica up to begin our invocation. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening out there. All right, please join me for some prayer. If you will go within, take a nice deep breath, breathing in, breathing out. So God is the power, the presence, and the principle. God is pure light, pure peace, and pure love. The source of love that I call God is in all things, as all things, existing and expressing at all times. And because of this, we are one with the one, one with the divine. 
Each one of us is a beautiful outpicturing of spirit at every given moment, in every situation, under every circumstance. So as I speak this word for tonight's service, I know that we are all absolutely filled with peace, love, and letting go, and that Reverend Mark is the perfect vessel to share God's truth with each one of us this evening. I know that we are uplifted and moved by Tina and Sam's wonderful music, and that we are lovingly cared for by our amazing volunteers and practitioners who are here, here to help guide and support us. I am so very grateful and filled with joy for this time we are having together, and I am absolutely blessed to be here tonight experiencing this wonderful service with each of you. And so I simply release this word into the law, the light, and the love, knowing that it is already done, it is so. And together we say, Amen. Amen. So if you'll just go within and join me in five minutes of meditation, just watching your breath gently and easily. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. And should your mind wander, just label it thinking or hearing or feeling and just go back to the breath and I'll bring you out in a few moments.
So we return our attention back into the sanctuary. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Beautiful as always, Tina, thank you. <laughs> well, good evening. <laughs> Hello again to all of you who are joining us by live stream. For those of you who are with us on Zoom and those who are dialed in listening to us. <laughs> Over here, okay. <laughs> um, so, give it up.
just like my topic on Sunday, I had picked this long before I knew all the things we would be asked to give up. <laughs> I um, actually was looking at it from the point of view of this being the season of Lent that so many people are um, uh, celebrating, but I'll get into that in a bit. You know, when I, uh, when I think of giving it up, I think the, that term suggests some kind of surrender, letting go, uh, something that we're all having to do quite a bit right now, I would say, right? Letting go of our familiar patterns, having to do things a different way. And it's not always easy. And I would venture to say that it can be particularly challenging for those of us in teachings like Science of Mind and New Thought teachings that stress how you know, our thought is creative and that if we think positive thoughts and if we really know the power of our thought, that we can create so much good, that we participate with God in co-creating our life experiences. And uh, so, you know, we, we teach that the more our consciousness is trained to know and accept God's nature in and around us as, you know, a goodness that's ever present that we can tap into and create all kinds of outer forms of good. Uh, and that we can work on that by affirming, by knowing that this relationship that I've always longed for, it, it is something I can actually have. It is something, you know, that is uh, available to me and to all beings. This form of, you know, abundance, this new job, whatever, that by really believing it, that we can create those things for ourselves. Sometimes it takes time. We have to, you know, use our um, time in spiritual practice to break through those limiting beliefs, those ways that we say, oh, I can't, it's not possible, you know, that'll never happen for me. We have to break through those patterns, and it can take a lot of tenacity to do that. So we keep affirming, we keep praying, we keep doing our work on, in consciousness, and then we have that breakthrough. And uh, I think many people are drawn into this and other New Thought teachings for that very reason of this idea that there isn't a God out there that's withholding anything from us that we have to somehow please to be able to have the good that we want. You know, there's, uh, I think a lot of people love this idea that if I work on my consciousness, I can create a lot of the good that I really would like to experience in life. There's another side of science of mind though, and all metaphysical teachings that people don't necessarily want to embrace right away. And that is the world out there is not our source of good. And yes, indeed, we want to use our, our creative power, that, the fact that we're one with God. We, we have, you know, God's creativity lies within us. And God seeks to find ways to create good in ways that we uniquely, you know, seek to experience it and express it. But, you know, there will be times in our journey that we will affirm, we will work on our consciousness, we'll do everything that we've been taught to do, and the good that we are wanting to experience just isn't showing up. And what happens in those moments is, see, we're, we're really fixating on certain forms in the world, saying that we need that, we need those things to feel good, to experience goodness. We limit ourselves. It's another way of limiting ourselves from experiencing God's goodness when we fixate on certain things saying, I have to have that to be happy. God in us doesn't need anything to be happy. It's the happiness, it's the joy, it's the love, it's the beauty, it's the abundance of God in us that creates anything good out there. It comes first from that spiritual nature in us seeking an outer expression of itself that creates anything that's good 
out in the world. So as I mentioned before, when I was, when I was looking at this topic initially, it was around uh, the fact that this is the season of Lent. And so this is a time where many, uh, many people, Christians, have decided to give up certain pleasures, certain you know, worldly forms of good for 40 days. And you'll find some version of this practice in virtually every faith tradition. Uh, some idea of try to do without something that you generally engage in some kind of pleasure that you're accustomed to. And I think these practices can, um, can give rise to this sense that being spiritual, if we're good spiritual beings, then we're not supposed to indulge in worldly pleasures. That somehow doing without worldly pleasures is more spiritual than when we indulge in them. And that's not true at all. That's not what these practices are about. Now, Ernest Holmes, our founder, told us that if the good we seek brings a greater sense of joy and fulfillment to us, that if it feels like it's just going to expand our lives and it uh, in no way harms others, then absolutely we should go for it. You know, the very impulse for some greater experience, the very impulse for that kind of a relationship or this type of a career or, you know, this experience of financial abundance or any other form of abundance, that's God's nature seeking to be fulfilled through us. So God itself seeks to experience that goodness through us. The purpose and value of these practices of giving up worldly pleasures for some period of time is to counteract the tendency to start fixating on these things in the world, saying, I need that to be happy. There's a difference between saying, I love this, and it makes me very happy, that, between that and saying, I need this to be happy. Can you sense that, the difference between the two? So giving up that worldly pleasure for a period of time, what we then learn to do is find some other way to feel fulfilled some other way to experience joy, some other way to experience a sense of connection or whatever it is that we're giving up represents to us from a spiritual point of view. It helps us to train our minds to expand in the sense of not being dependent of things in the world. When one form is no longer available to us, we can find some other way to experience God's goodness. And it it trains us to expand our minds, to be more open to all the ways that we can continue to experience God. Aren't we being asked to do that right now, right? As we are having to give up certain patterns and habits, it's like, that doesn't mean we can't still experience love and connection and beauty and wholeness. We just have to be willing to do so in a different way. And here's the key, I think, that when we talk about giving up, to give something up, to surrender in spiritual terms, I think we have this feeling that we're being told to give up happiness, give up, just try to do without feeling fulfilled try to do without, you know, feeling abundance or feeling, you know, like you have so much love in your life. It's not about giving up the pleasure. It's about letting go of whatever hinders us from experiencing God's nature more fully. You know, for every, for every step into greater good that we, we can take, for every way that we can open to a new version of goodness, a more expansive version of goodness in our lives, it means letting go of something and embracing something. We have to embrace the idea that this is really possible for me, that yes, this can really be mine, but we also have to let go of 
those ideas that were limiting us from having that greater experience. And in Science of Mind, we talk about four kingdoms of consciousness where to go from one kingdom to the other, we have to give something up. So for example, when we are in victim consciousness, we're feeling like you know, life is done unto us and you know, we have no concern, poor us, this has happened, there's nothing we can do about it, you know, or all the ways that we tell ourselves, we're not enough, there isn't enough, so therefore I can't have as good an experience of life as maybe some others. We're in victim consciousness. And to move out of victim consciousness, we have to give up blame, shame, and regret. We have to give up the idea that life just happens to us. And it's kind of like we have to start ado adopting this idea of I can affect my life. I participate in co-creating with God. And so we go into this idea of imposing our will, what we would like upon the universe. We go into this thy will, or pardon me, my will can be realized. My will for a greater relationship, my will for a greater career, my will for uh, you know, an experience of adventure, whatever, is possible. I can do this, I can have this, and as we move into that consciousness, that's when we're doing our affirmations. This good is mine today. We're training ourselves to accept it as something that's available to us. We do start manifesting greater good in our lives. In life, you know, we start getting our lives in order, our you know, human affairs in order. But then to move to the next kingdom, that's the where we say, thy will, there's this power that's even greater than me. There's this infinite mind that's so much greater than my finite mind in which I live and I can open to it, I can surrender to it, and it can then express itself more fully through me. That's, that's the one that we tend to resist. I'll just mention that the fourth kingdom is oneness, which we get there just when we let go of any sense of separation whatsoever. But this moving to the third kingdom, what we have to give up is, brace yourself, folks, control, <laughs> trying to control everything. Because, see, when we're trying to control everything, again, we're saying, I need things to be like this for me to be happy. And when we're telling ourselves that I need things to be this way, we're putting a lot of I need, I need out there, out into the universe. And so our experience becomes one of unfulfilled neediness. In Kingdom 3, we're asked to surrender to the thy will. The reason we resist is because we haven't developed a strong enough sense that the thy will is only for our greater good. We haven't gotten that sense of the universe being for us and never against us. There's a sense that when I surrender, when I give up, my ego-based you know, ideas of what I need or how it should be or whatever, then I'm somehow going to be unfulfilled. And it's the exact opposite. We need to remember that the very thing we are surrendering to is the power and the presence that seeks to have that ever-expansive experience and expression of itself through us. Now, for me, when I in that state of resistance, like, oh, no, I don't want it to be like this. No, I want to have my way. I think of the image of watching a little child, you know, when a little kid doesn't get its way, a parent is trying to protect it from doing something that, it, you know, could, in, you know, eventually lead to some harm. And so it's screaming or whatever, and the parent is holding the child and trying to cover the child. The child is resisting and resisting and crying until finally the child settles down. And you know, when I imagine that, I, I don't have vivid memories, but I can sense times where I've done that as a child, and either it was my father or my mom or my grandmother that would be holding me like that. And I just so didn't want to surrender to their way. But when I did, I suddenly felt this presence, this being 
that was holding me in love and showing me a different way to have the good that I was seeking. Have you ever had that experience? You know, you're just fighting against them when you finally surrender. It's like, oh, okay, there's a different way for me to experience good. That's the give it up that we're looking for to move into Kingdom 3. And I think this is something we need to be focusing on and working on a lot right now. <clears throat> There's a Sufi tale of a man on a quest who, quest who finds himself trapped in a huge public bath. And the man is alone and knows that if he doesn't escape, he'll die. And then a parrot, and I have to tell you, I'm telling this story the way it was written. It's not easy for me because I have two parrots, but I will go. Um, a parrot suddenly appears and tells him that if he can shoot it with his bow and arrow, he'll be free. And the man has three arrows, and he quickly fires the first. The parrot flutters into the air, and the man misses. The man then turns to stone from the feet to the waist. The man uh, then fires a second arrow, misses, and turns to stone up to his shoulders. He has one arrow left. What should he do? If he misses a third time, he's dead. And I think the riddle beautifully illustrates the challenge of those times when our conventional ego, you know, the strategies that we're accustomed to just fall apart. And if we continue to insist on having our own way, it'll be only to our own demise. And the story ends when the man closes his eyes, says, God is great. God is great, and he fires the fire, final arrow, and this time he hits the parrot and he's freed. The idea of that being when faced with no other options, we are there to give up something greater than our ego-based needs to find a different source of resolution. Right? Einstein reminded us that the mind that resolves the problem is in the same level of consciousness, same level of thinking as the one that created it. We have to be able to surrender our way of thinking. And you know, there are so many different mind patterns and behaviors I could talk about this evening that it might behoove us to give these up. But I think today more than ever, I think it's about giving up the sense of trying to control things from our current level of thinking. You know, I think this is the time where we absolutely have to remind ourselves that there's this greater power, this greater love, this greater intelligence, this greater healing power than anything that we face here in the world. You know, as we, as we want to give up something that doesn't serve us. Like right now, we're so trying to get a grasp on this and try to resolve this whole crisis that we're facing globally at the moment. You know, we're trying to grapple, use ideas, that ways of thinking that we've used up until now. What we want to do to release that is to pour in the opposite, pour in the greater good that we're trying to embrace. So. If I were to say to you right now, so, you know, everyone, we need to give up our fear. We need to give up our need to control. That would be a little bit like if I told you, don't think about the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> what do we do right away, right? <laughs> Why did I pick that? Well, you know. <laughs> Putting our attention on things that remind us of the greater goodness of God than anything we face in the world, that's what we want to be doing right now. You know, and I feel like I'm repeating something, you know, what I talked about on Sunday, but I really feel this is what we need to be remembering and reminding ourselves of is this is a time to be focusing on things that can 
make us aware of this presence that's so much more intelligent, so much more loving, so much greater than any challenge we face. I would invite you to consciously, when you focus on your breath in meditation, or just every now and then, just stop and focus on your breath and realize that with each breath, the miracle of life occurs. We could put together all the scientists on the planet and they would not be able to recreate that miracle. And yet it happens with every breath. Take time to pause and look at nature out there and see how things are thriving. And with no effort whatsoever, with that much life energy, that much power, and we don't think that this problem is going to be solved. See, as we know that, as we hold the consciousness of God is so much greater than all of this, that, because we're interconnected, that goes out to the universe. That supports all of those who are looking for ways to get us through these challenges. In our quiet time, in our prayers, think of this vast intelligence existing in the tiniest atoms all the way to the vast galaxies. You know, let us sense that we're surrendering into something that's so amazing that the ideas are there. The ideas for the solutions are there. We're just surrendering into it, saying, OK, I'm giving up all my limited thinking. I'm knowing for others that as a species, we are opening up to something greater to come forth and show us the way. Let us also focus on ways to be kind to one another, to feel that God nature in us. You know, we're being asked to stay home with people that maybe we don't spend as much time with. How often do we complain about we never get to have time with our loved ones? Make the most of it. Find ways to be loving. Find ways, like we're doing right now, to connect with others and feel that God nature in you that's there, that's still there no matter what's going on in the world. This is the time to give up ideas of how big our problems are and to absolutely remember how great God is within and around us. Let's turn our attention inward. And so I invite you to turn your attention to this situation that we're facing with the coronavirus, and any fears that are coming up from it. And notice how below the surface of the fears or the discomfort, there's an impulse toward health, toward wholeness, toward well-being. That's God's impulse. It is the ultimate power of health, wholeness, well-being that's seeking to reveal itself through us. And turn your awareness to the miracle of life that occurs with every breath. Imagine all the life and nature around you that continues to thrive right here, right now. Remind yourself, this is God. This is the greater power. Imagine us as humans collectively giving up our finite thinking and opening to it and it revealing itself as health, revealing the cures, the solution. Imagine yourself opening to it by releasing any tendency to hold back love and to find ways to give and share love with others in these difficult times and feel its presence in you being the one that's sharing its love. And knowing that everything begins with an intention, I invite you to set your intention to release any sense of human challenges having powers of their own. Just remember, they have no power of their own. 
and follow that up by setting your intention to embrace a greater sense of God's love, God's healing power is always prevailing. And is it being there right now to reveal itself? And knowing we can always bring our awareness back to this place, I invite you to bring your attention back into the room as our beautiful Tina comes forward to lead us in our chant. I am divinely guided step by step Moment by moment, breath by breath, I am divinely guided, step by step, moment by moment, breath by breath, I am divinely guided, step by step. Moment by moment, breath by breath, I am divinely guided, step by step, moment by moment, breath by breath, I am divinely guided, step by step. Moment by moment, breath by breath, I am divinely guided, step by step, moment by moment, breath by breath. So please join us in prayer. As we turn our attention inward and just allow ourselves to feel that presence in us that every moment just seeks to experience joy, wholeness, abundance, every form of goodness we can imagine, that we can feel, that we can experience and express. And let us know that that is an impulse that is felt throughout the universe because it is the impulse of the one life, the one power, the one infinite invisible that I call God, out of which all things come into being and that its nature fills all creation. As we say so often, there is no spot where God is not. The nature of this one lives in us, it lives in me, in every being here, every being everywhere. It is our true nature, and we are one with it now and always. I know for each one of us here that we are eternal and that the truth of who we are cannot be damaged or distorted in any way. Despite the fact that our bodies and our experiences change, the underlying spirit within us always remains the same. The inner resource is always available to us, guiding us at all times and is the absolute source in which we can always rely upon. Regardless, I'm sorry. Regardless of what changes may occur on the human plane, the nature of God is constant and is there for us to tap into in new and powerful ways. And that presence that we can tap into always in new and powerful ways is pure love, light, health, wholeness, that anything that feels like dis-ease or discord is simply something that the human mind, not knowing its true nature, has created, but it can be transformed, transmuted at any time. So let us know together right now that that vibration of health, wholeness, well-being lies at the center of our being, at the center of every being everywhere, that where there are others right now that may be feeling that this virus or any other kind of ailment 
has power over them. We know God is the greater power. And as we know this, I know things are shifting. And that health, that vitality, that wholeness is being restored. And I know that as divine expressions of spirit, we are knowing greater peace and fulfillment in all of our work endeavors, and that we are experiencing new heights of joyful fulfillment and satisfaction in our careers as we co-create with God. And I absolutely know that that one that we create with, that we create out of, is infinite. It's limitless. It is abundance itself. It is the infinite giver, receiver, vibration of the universe that lives in us. And as we open to this idea right now, we see an expansion of our capacity to give and receive love, to be creative and to celebrate the creativity all around us. If we're feeling any sense of lack or limitation in the area of finances, we remember God is an energy of love. Money is an energy of love. It is a way of saying thank you. And that we open to it coming to us, providing for us and us giving back generously to life because we are centers through which God's abundance is realized. And I'm knowing for each one of us divine connection with each person that we encounter and interact with and that each relationship in our lives is harmonious, grace-filled, and loving. Regardless of what is said or done, we are able to connect with God in each person, the God within each person, with love, compassion, and peaceful understanding, knowing that we are all expressions of the divine. And that vibration of love is always an impulse toward greater good. So let us now set our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, whether it be for ourselves, for loved ones, for the situations in the world. We know that we are feeling that vibration, that impulse of spirit for more and more of itself to be revealed throughout creation. And we know that God is at the center of every one of these situations. And by our knowing, I know that good is revealed for that is the way of the divine. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth, for knowing that God is always there at the center of every moment, every situation. I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Amen. Well, I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle with no more strife. With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God No more struggle and no more strife with my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, I'm only here for God Amen <laughs> So this is a time in our service for our affirmative giving. We always like to give with that sense of gratitude, knowing anything we get to share now came from that infinite source, and we are sharing of its nature. 
our, by giving back. So let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always, for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say, So as we bring our service to a close, uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, we normally come through the sanctuary now to collect prayer requests, but uh, in the interest of not having too many hands touch too many things. Uh, so what we'll be doing, I uh, just encourage you, if you have any prayer request, anything for yourself, for loved ones, um, just send those by email to prayer at nhcrs.org, prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call the church number, 818-762-7566. I believe it's option four on the recording, uh, but you will be prompted if you uh, want the ministry of prayer. Uh, you can leave a recorded message. We have practitioners who check uh, the messages and the emails every evening, and so your prayer requests will be picked up and you'll have uh, our entire core practitioners supporting you in prayer. So please take advantage of that. I want to say thank you as we do always for those who've been of service this evening. Thank you to Bob Houston uh, for being here to set up before me. My mic off, sorry. <laughs> who is ensuring that we are heard and seen. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> to our amazing musical support this evening, Tina and Sam. <laughs> to Erica for the beautiful support up here on pulpit. Again, to Bob Houston, who led our meditation before service. To Christine Samuelson, who is holding vigil for us during the service. Uh, to all of you who have joined us here and to those of you who have joined us via the internet, thank God for all this technology. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're so glad you could be with us. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so uh, just a few things to let you know. Uh, next week, my topic will be, <laughs> where's God in this? <laughs> Not that this is at all relevant. Uh, Gourmets for God bidding has been postponed. Um, so just so you're aware, we want to get through this period and we will keep you informed when it's ready to be resumed. Thank you for your patience. 
Uh, grief support will be uh, led this Sunday at 1 p.m. by practitioner Carol Winokur. And um, so those who are going through any grief, uh, please avail yourself of, of that. It's, uh, Carol is beautifully trained uh, in, in grief support and does a beautiful job. Our Caring Circle orientation meeting that we had told you about has been postponed. Uh, we had originally planned it for March 29th, but again, we're just, with everything changing day to day, uh, we will let you know uh, when we'll be resuming that. Our Sunday services, as of right now, we expect to be here in, uh, in the sanctuary where you can join us here. Again, we're grateful to have the space that people can spread out. Uh, our guest speaker is Reverend Patrick Harbula, dear friend of mine, a spiritual coach, and author of Magic of the Soul. Thank you, for, you know, Patrick. Um, so we hope you can join us either here or again. We will be live streaming at 9:45. Yes, please. Check our website. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, well, our intention right now is live stream 9:45, and we will make the Zoom. Um, available to people who want to come in that way or dial in. So the same link that you use today for those of you who are joining us by Zoom, will uh, that's what we'll be using uh, on Sunday as well. Our youth church uh, will not be meeting on Sundays. Uh, so I know that both the teen director Liz and the other youth director, Julie, and of course, in coordination with Reverend Nadine, they're looking for ways to provide the youth with uh, connection via Zoom as well. So what we invite you to do, as Blair reminded me, check our website, nhcrs.org, North Hollywood Church Religious Science, nhcrs.org, and we will try to keep you updated that way. Or if you don't have access to the internet, call our main number, 818-762-7566. And uh, you'll get a greetings for church hours and location. Select that one and we will keep that updated with the latest information. We're gonna stay connected with you however we need yes. to, folks. Yeah. We are, yes. <laughs> And of course, our beloved Dr. Mark will be back next week. And so we're so looking forward to having him lift us up and know the truth. And I know he sends you all his love. And um, he is praying, praying, praying for us as we move through this. So with that, I think it's time to bring the service to a close. Oh, you'll also notice we're not having the time out on the patio with uh, refreshments and everything. I don't need to explain why, right? <laughs> so, but let's join together in prayer one more time. And so how grateful I am once again for all the ways that that beautiful life, that vibration of love and light and wholeness has made itself felt and known and realized throughout our time together for its presence as a sense of connection that vibration of love of coming together, however we join together this evening, whether in person or via technology, for the way it has been felt through the inspiration of our music and through Sam and Tina, through the words, through the silence, through the prayers. And I know that as we go forward, those of us who are physically here, returning to our destination safely, and continue to move on with our lives, that this idea of giving it ever does not serve us in this moment to be open to that greater experience of God's goodness, that we are open to that idea of surrender, and it continues to bless us in so many ways as we go forward. It ripples out into the world and blesses others. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we have received and how they multiply going forward. And in gratitude, I just release this word knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Thank you again out there, out there, <laughs> wherever, and out here <laughs> for being with us. Let's stand and let's sing. Oh.